Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to week five. We're going to talk about perfusion and cardiovascular alterations, including concepts of perfusion, hypertension, uh, coronary artery disease, and heart failure. All right, let's start with perfusion. So it may be primary or secondary diagnosis, which means um, primary diagnosis is what you're admitted for the or in the hospital for, and the secondary diagnosis could be some other ailment that you have. Um, acute or chronic respiratory acidosis, when the ventilation failure occurs, um, that's acute. Chronic is usually secondary to other medical conditions. Um, metabolic acidosis, where uh, patients also have pulmonary vasoconstriction, increased pulmonary vascular pressures, right ventricle failure, and cardio myocardial depression. So some alterations um, could be clotting disorders, uh, alterations in pediatric cardiology, um, more specifically, congenital cardiac deficits or defects. Uh, the most common in adults are hypertension, coronary artery disease, myocardial infarction, and stroke. And also uh, heart failure should be in there as well. Common cardiovascular illnesses of aging. Um, so the myocardium, sinoatrial node, SA node, left ventricle, and valves and blood vessels. Some genetic considerations and risk factors, age, gender, race, um, personal health history. Have you had a history of this before? Family history and some genetic disorder. Some common screenings. Um, I think the two obvious ones would be the heart rate and the blood pressure. A lipid panel, for, mostly for coronary artery disease, EKG and stress test. All right, let's talk about high blood pressure or hypertension. All right, this one's kind of dark, but um, this gives some hypertension definitions. I'll let you read that a little bit. And the major risk factors for um, Yeah, right, I'll just let you read that. So I think that's resp respiratory failure. All right, so here's a diagram. Um, you know, blood pressure over 150, over 90. Uh, this gives kind of pathways. Let's see, provide patient education related to lifestyle management and DASH diet. That includes uh, Let's see, it stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension. It's a dietary plan specifically designed to help prevent and manage hypertension, also known as high blood pressure. Um, it was developed by the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute in the United States and supported by extensive research. It's characterized by its emphasis on consuming nutrient-rich, foods that are known to promote heart health and low blood pressure. So that's all we're going to talk about on that. And you can look at the rest of this. Initiate medications. Uh, medications are important for blood pressure. Beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, um, diuretics. And then this gives goals for under 60 and over 60. <coughs> health promotion <coughs> and this focuses on education um, focus on modifiable risk factors for high blood pressure review smoking history and promote quitting smoking uh, discuss risks of obesity excess alcohol and a sedentary lifestyle 
encourage healthy diet, emphasize moderate alcohol intake if they drink alcohol, and promote gradual addition of exercise. An assessment can be obtained information through observation and patient interview. You're going to notice that a patient health history is going to be big. Assess for morning headaches, cardiovascular, and CNS manifestations. History of high blood pressure, uh, renal disease, uh, diabetes, family history, and current medications. Perform physical exam, including vital signs, blood pressure measurement on both arms, apical and peripheral pulses, and an eye exam if appropriate. A few nursing diagnoses include inadequate health maintenance, lack of nutrition knowledge, fluid volume access, and treatment plan adherence difficulties. And there could be a number of factors on that one. Planning. And when I say planning, this is more goals oriented. Uh, set goals for patient care, um, including lifestyle choices, uh, reduced sodium, fluid balance, uh, blood pressure control, and medication regimen understanding. We want to make sure they understand the medications that they're taking. Implementation. So for promoting health maintenance, uh, we want to encourage the patients to be partners in their care, um, have a invested interest, basically, um, encourage healthy lifestyle changes, help patients understand the progressive nature of high blood pressure, uh, promote adherence to a treatment plan so you can conduct follow-up and review disease management regularly, address reported non-compliance, and just some people are just not going to comply with certain things. Provide tips to overcome dietary and activity challenges. Uh, promote balanced nutrition, so weight loss diets. Offer encouragement. Maintain fluid volume. Um, teach the patient to monitor their intake and output. Um, educate on signs and symptoms of fluid retention. Uh, reinforce sodium restriction and dietary limitations. And evaluation. Uh, we want to find out how much the patient understands about the treatment plan. Um, evaluate patient's knowledge of medication regimen, uh, per, in particular the side effects and special instructions. Advocate for medication changes and additional strategies um, if blood pressure remains uncontrolled. So basically change up the plan if it's something that's not working, whether that's medications or diet. Uh, provide patient teaching and recommendation or recommend support groups. All right, coronary artery disease. A few things on this one. All right, I'll let you look at this and then I'll read some stuff. So coronary artery disease, leading cause of death in the U.S., claims about 370,000 lives annually, caused by impaired blood flow to the heart muscle due to atherosclerotic plaque accumulation in coronary arteries. I probably didn't say that right, but close enough. It can be asymptomatic or lead to various conditions, including angina, acute coronary syndrome, acute myocardial infarction or heart attack, dysrhythmias, heart failure, and sudden death. Angina pec pectoris um, or angina, that's chest pain resulting from reduced coronary blood flow. Imbalance between myocardial blood supply and demand uh, caused by coronary artery disease atherosclerosis, vessel constriction, or hypermetabolic conditions. Other triggers include anemia, heart failure, ventricular hypertrophy, or enlarging of the ventricles, and pulmonary disease. Acute coronary syndrome is sudden reduced blood flow through coronary arteries, leads to reduced oxygen delivery 
to the cardiac tissues and includes unstable angina and acute MI. And then acute myocardial infarction. This is basically necrosis or death of the myocardial cells. Life-threatening condition results from loss of blood flow to the heart muscle, often due to coronary circular blockage, can lead to reduced cardiac function, cardiogenic shock, and death. In this one, prompt treatment is critical. A little bit of pathophysiology. So, arthrosclerosis, probably butchering that name. Common cause of reduced coronary blood flow, characterized by plaque formation in the artery walls. Uh, factors like abnormal lipid met metabolism and end endothelial cell injury contribute. contribute. LDL and VLDL, HDL, uh, carry cholesterol and triglycerides, contributing to atherosclerosis. Now let me back up. LDL and VLDL do these. HDL helps transport cholesterol away from the tissues, reducing atherosclerosis risk. So the process of atherosclerosis, athero, atherosclerosis and it starts with a bless, with the vessel injury due to factors like damaged endothelium or hypertension. Plaque formations begin with lipoproteins adhering to the vessel endothelium. Inflammatory response, platelet contact, and smooth muscle cell proliferate or prolif proliferation follows. Plaque can lead to vessel narrowing and reduced dilation capacity. I need to go anywhere on that. And this is what the normal artery looks like. Artery with some fat buildup, then blocked artery. Health promotion. So we want to educate on tobacco cessation, and that's going to be a big topic for all of these. Uh, provide dietary recommendations. Again, another big topic. Encourage regular exercise. Promote regular screenings for risk factors. Assessment. We want to observe and interview the patient. Observe, observe for a sign of distress, such as fear, anxiety, or panic. <coughs> Look for physical manifestations, like wide eyes darting between objects or people. Note if the patient grasps, grasps area of the body in pain. Observe any sign of decreased consciousness. Check for symptoms like shortness of breath, loss of consciousness, or grimacing. Record detailed information about chest pain, including its location, intensity, characteristic, radiation, and timing. Document associated symptoms like nausea, heartburn, shortness of breath, and anxiety. Assess the patient's lifestyle, including their current diet, exercise patterns, and medications. Inquire about the patient's smoking, alcohol, smoking history and alcohol consumption patterns. Gather information about the patient's medical history, including any heart disease, hypertension, or diabetes. Investigate the patient's family's history, specifically regarding coronary artery disease or any other cardiac problems. For the, <coughs> excuse me, for the physical exam, document vital signs, including blood pressure, heart rate, and respiratory rate. Listen to the breath sounds and the heart sounds to identify any abnormalities. Assess the strength and equality of peripheral pulses. Observe the patient's skin and temperature, both centrally and peripherally. 
Record the patient's current weight and evaluate whether it's appropriate for the body or for their height. Calculate the BMI. Measure the waist to hip ratio. Evaluate the skin's color, temperature, and moisture. Assess the patient's level of consciousness. Monitor cardiac rhythm using bedside monitor. And examine bowel sounds and check for abdo ab abdominal ten tenderness. Yeah. I can see if I can even talk. And these need to be timely. The nursing diagnosis, there are quite a few of them here. I'll let you take a look at them. This is for coronary artery disease and for angina. For acute MI, um, education is important. We want fear and inadequate coping skills, impaired peripheral tissue perfusion, and I'll let you read these last two. Goals or planning. For coronary artery disease, uh, we want to verbalize modifiable risks, or they, we want the patient to verbalize these. Uh, we want them to describe dietary changes, describe lifestyle choices, prevent cardiac muscle damage, and control blood pressure. For ineffective perfusion, the goals would be understanding medication use. Uh, a lot of patients just don't understand what their medications do. They just say, oh, I take something for blood pressure or, or whatever. I reduce activity level and describe emergency actions. Implementation, I would want to do these things here. Um, I'll let you read that. And I think the big one would be promote adherence to therapeutic regimen. Now, sometimes you have to be creative for a certain patients to be able to make this happen. And evaluation. Um, you want to evaluate the patient's progress to towards goals. Monitor vital signs. Assess reduction in angina events, absence of complications. Let's move on to heart failure. All right, so here's a little diagram. Okay. Here's an overview. Over Heart failure a condition in which the heart cannot pump enough blood into the cir circulation to meet the body's needs. Um, muscle damage or stress occurs, um, often caused by a combination of ineffective contraction, relaxation. It's a progressive condition, can be treated. Um, one main consequence is pulmonary edema. And Cardiogenic pulmonary edema, signs of decompensation. Medical emergency required, or requiring immediate treatment. Yeah, they won't be able to breathe too well with this. <clears throat> and there's right-sided heart failure and left-sided heart failure. <coughs> <coughs> For assessment findings, um, on the left side, um, fatigue, activity intolerance, they could become dizzy or shortness of breath, um, cyanosis, crackles, right-sided. Uh, you can see more um, with edema in the feet and the legs, anorexia, nausea, right upper quadrant, abdominal pain, and distended neck veins. Other assessments would be weight gain and edema, nocturema, nocturemia, proximal nocturnal dyspnea, a sensation uh, of shortness of breath that awakens the patient, often after, hour, often after one to two hours of sleep, and is usually relieved by sitting up.
and this me at rest, S3, S4 are heard on opposite quotation. Some complications, hepatomeglia, uh, which is uh, enlargement of the liver, and splenomeglia, amegaly, um, enlarged spleen, because of the fluid buildup and pressure, impaired liver function, uh, dysrhythmias, pleural effusions, and acute pulmonary edema. A few diagnostic tests. Atrial natriuretic peptide, uh, serum electrolytes, some urinalysis, BUN, serum creatinine, liver function tests, and then these other ones, EKG, and a Doppler study. Chest x-ray is a big one. Some pharmacological therapy, ACE inhibitors, um, angiotensin II receptor blockers, beta blockers, diuretics, basal dilators like nitroglycerin, uh, digitalis, and some anti dysrhythmics. Nutrition and activity, um, we want to encourage sodium restriction. Because remember, with osmosis, you have sodium going through your blood. It draws in water and raises your blood pressure. <clears throat> uh, fluid restriction, activity restriction, and I'll let you read the rest of these. And then this one says, important for a patient to be aware of target blood pressure and heart rate. For the nursing process, health promotion, we want to promote lifestyle changes, offer smoking and alcohol or other substance abuse recovery, educate about coronary artery disease and its connection with heart failure, discuss risk factors for CAD and ways to reduce them. Assessment would include the history, risk factors, diet, what's their diet, uh, proxysmal nox, nocturnal dyspnea, we just talked about that, weight gain or loss, anorexia, nausea, current medications, and any shortness of breath, cough or chest pain. A physical exam would include vital signs, general appearance, color of skin, capillary refill and edema, edema is going to be a big one. That's why we always check their feet pretty much with every assessment. <coughs> Heart, breath, and bowel sounds, and abdominal assessment. A few nursing diagnoses include decreased cardiac output, excessive fluid volume, and activity intolerance, and knowledge deficit. Planning or goals include uh, medication understanding, symptom reporting, oxygenation, tissue, tissue perfusion, and nutrition. Implementation. So for monitor fluid volume, um, we want to assess respiratory status and lung sounds, intake and output and daily weights, abdominal girth, and hemodynamic measurements and fluid intake. For activity, um, organize care to allow rest periods, assist with ADLs as needed, plan and implement progressive activities with physical therapist, provide written and verbal information about post-discharge activities in their language, offer referrals for home health care and community resources. For low sodium diet, we want to discuss sodium restriction with the patient, uh, consult a dietitian to plan and teach low sodium diet, and provide other educational resources. To maintain a good cardiac output, uh, we can teach them to elevate the head of the bed with pillows at work, or not work, at home. Um, to reduce the work of breathing, monitor vital signs and oxygen saturation, monitor BNP levels, 
That's uh, an enzyme that's secreted when the heart stretches. Uh, monitor vital signs. Okay, we already said that. Auscultate heart sounds and lung sounds and administer supplemental oxygen if needed. Implementation for a plan of discharge. Educate the patient and family about the disease process. And then these other things here. Emphasize importance of following the prescribed diet and exercise recommendations. And reinforce the need to follow up or to make follow up medical appointments. Some home care teaching uh, about the disease process. Uh, warning signs of cardiac decompensation. Uh, medications and side effects. Low sodium diet exercise. Eat six small meals instead of just like three big ones. Allow time between activities and rest. And stop activities that cause chest pain, shortness of breath. And evaluation. <clears throat> you want to evaluate each goal and then make changes as you need to.